Okay, so today I wanna to cover 12 budget-friendly camping and overland items. These are items that go on every single trip that we go on. They're incredibly useful items and they are very affordable. Okay, I know that everybody's pressed for time, so I'm gonna to try to cover all 12 of these items in 12 minutes. For every minute that I go over, I will go ahead and pick one of these items and I will just randomly give it away to somebody in the comments section. So make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below and I'll be able to contact you for each minute over and give one of these away. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start the timer and uh, let's jump into the items. Okay, item number one is this emergency rain poncho. Hold on a second. I get that you probably have a hundred dollar rain jacket or something like that, but the deal is when you don't have rain pants with you and all that kind of gear and you don't wanna get soaked out there, you throw on your $20 backup rain poncho that you just happen to always have in your camping essentials bag. I also have a couple of these in there for my kids. These are just like little $2 rain ponchos. These are all just for if you get stuck in a jam and you wanna stay dry. Okay, so item number two are these tension straps. Something you can use to secure a load, tie things to the top of your roof, tie things down in the bed of your truck. You can use them to make clotheslines at camp, all kinds of useful things, to hang lights. I've used them a million different ways that they've come in handy on trips. Now the thing is, it's just a strap that goes in here. You simply pull it tight. It will not pull back through because it has teeth right here. Um, these are rated for up to 600 pounds, so it can handle a lot. I know a lot of overlanders have ratchet straps, and you should actually have have a set of ratchet straps with you because ratchet straps come in really handy for bush mechanics sometimes when you have problems. But this is much quicker to use to secure loads and do different things in the camp than a ratchet strap. Check them out, it's called a tension strap. I'll put a link below for them. All right, let's jump to item number three. These Cabela's tripod chairs. Okay, the reason that these are a big deal is, see how small this is? I get that you probably are gonna bring some more comfortable like lounge chairs, but those are really bulky and they take up a lot of space. So a lot of times we'll have one or two nice chairs for us and then I'll bring these for my kids. Or the other thing is I usually just have a couple of these extra just in case people forget their chairs. And you can always be the guy that saves the day with these. Um, they Velcro on the top. Um, I'll leave a link below. These are from Cabela's, they're insanely cheap. They work really good as a footstool too, just in case somebody else doesn't steal it. You got a good footstool. They're actually a lot more comfortable than you would think. So these are a great investment. Grab a couple of those. This is a black diamond magneto carabiner. And why I love it is instead of having the threaded locking mechanism on the front, it actually has two magnets right here and right here on the sides. And as you squeeze the sides, it unlocks it and it opens it up. So this is a locking carabiner that is very convenient to have, um, but you can, you can easily open it with one hand and it's just very satisfying, always unclicking that and opening it. So anyhow, you can either use it in your camp or you can just sit in your chair and click it away because it's a very satisfying sound. Um, but anyhow, long story short, this is my favorite carabiner because it's extremely easy to open. You can open it with one hand. It's something that we learned and we brought over from the rafting world where you have to be able to open your carabiners with one hand, but they also have to be able to lock. Um, we actually keep it on a little belt for rafting. You might wanna just bring this whole entire setup with you. The belt has a carabiner, it has a pulley, and then it has two pressics put together into a belt that you can wrap around your waist. The reason this is convenient to have with you is that you, with rope, you can turn this into a two to one to drag up a heavy load, get a pinned raft out, drag up a hurt hiker, up a cliff, different things like that. So this is a great setup to bring with you all around. Okay, item number five. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I did a whole entire video on it on my EDC, like everyday, every man EDC video. You can check it out there. But this is the M16 CRKT pocket knife. And the reason that I think this is a big deal is everybody should have a good pocket knife, but this is one that can also save a life. Um, it has the window popper on the bottom for breaking a window of a like overturned vehicle, especially if it's overturned in water. And then it has a seatbelt cutter right here. Obviously a pocket knife is pretty obvious, but this is my pocket knife of choice. When you are an overlander, you spend a lot of time on the road. There is a decent chance you're going to end up being the first person at a car crash someday. And and it is a handy tool to have, might even save a life. You need to get yourself a set of 
two-way radios. These are obviously very handy for a multitude of reasons. You can also use these for spotters. That's the number one. I always see people when they start overlanding with other people, they finally get a radio. But in the meantime, while they've been doing it on their own, um, you, when you have this in your cab and your spotters outside yelling at each other through the window is not the best way to try to get through difficult problems. So having two radios is a big deal. Get the, the thing about radios is I think people put them off too long because maybe they think that they're really expensive or something. You can get a good set of radios for under a hundred bucks. Um, definitely add radios to your mix. Okay, for number seven, I would recommend always having backup food. Not food that's part of your meal plan, but food that's easy to make if you ever get stuck in a jam, where like you got stuck on the trail and now it's way too late or it's pouring rain or something and you need to make a meal fast. So pack some like backpacking meals in your camping essentials bin or even some MREs that are even easier to warm up. So it's fast food that you can make in a pinch so everybody doesn't have to go to bed hungry. Okay, number eight is camp lighting. And this is something that I have a personal opinion on. I don't know if people will agree with me, but there's a lot of scene lighting that people are putting on their trucks nowadays that is extremely bright. And yes, if you have maybe like an S-Pod or something like that, you might have the ability to dim it, but a lot of people don't. And I like to have camp lighting where everybody can kind of hang out around the fire. You can see your way around the camp without tripping on anything, but it's not too bright. What I like to do is I like to either grab some lights like these that are behind me. You can get those for very, very cheap. And they plug into a USB uh, charger pack or better yet you can get something like this this is a black diamond um, little lantern that we have um, it has little legs that fold down folds up it has hooks on the top so you can hook it in the top of your tent and hang it so it's super handy it has a USB battery pack inside of it so you can charge it up and run the actual light on it itself but then if you don't want to do that, you can plug in string lights like these behind me um, into the USB port here on the side and you can power those and hang them in a tree or hang them along a rope or hang them along a tension strap like what I was talking about earlier. Um, so this with those makes for some very, very nice mood lighting. The other thing is there's these other lights that I can show you here. Um, these lights are like the ones that people hang on their back porches, but you can get them in an LED version where it uses very little power. Um, so I love getting these and hanging these, but if you're gonna power these, you're gonna need something more like a Yeti or plug them into your car if you have that option um, and you have an inverter, uh, but make sure you don't kill your battery. But you get the point. If you have like a Yeti or a Goal Zero or Jackery or something like that, these lights are really amazing um, to run at camp as well. Okay, for number nine, we've got a portable toilet. Now this toilet is very, very comfortable. It's very, very sturdy. It folds up very small. And then it also comes with these little packages that has a bag in it for catching the waste, obviously. That bag has a powder in it that turns the liquids to like a gel and it also is a deodorizer. So it makes it smell not as bad. And you can get more of those. They're very inexpensive. Um, and then it gives you the ability that once you're done with that bag, you can seal that bag, stick it inside of another Ziploc bag, and you can transport your waste home with you. We go camping in a lot of places where it is pack in, pack out. And I know that's not always that popular, but we're big believers that if you're in a pack in, pack out place, that you should in fact pack in your stuff and pack it out. So having a toilet like this is really key for doing that easily. Also, I have small children. So all in all, bringing a toilet like this just makes the experience that much more easy and comfortable where you can do your business with a great view and not be worried about the cleanup. Okay, for number 10, we have in-cab storage options or organizers for inside your truck. When you're going on these trips, you're usually carrying a lot of stuff and organization is one of the key things that kind of keeps you from going crazy when you're on the road for a long time. So we have these uh, pouches that hang off the back of each of our drivers, our driver and passenger seat that offer a lot of additional storage and give you a lot of options to organize things. We have our bear spray in there. So everybody always knows it's in the exact same spot. It's easy to get to. 
too. And then in the front down here, you can see that we also have these mole panels that were put onto the side, of kind of the, the gear shift tower, I guess is what I would call it, the center console tower. This gives you a ton of options. We always had our water bottles laying on the floor, they'd fall over and roll around, and it was really annoying. So being able to put these in here, put these pouches on the side that the water bottles can go into. I always keep a spare pocket knife, a spare flashlight on these. Uh, the radio hooks onto these when we have the radio in there. Um, so it's a great way to organize stuff and not have it all in the center console, just creating a big mess. Okay, we're getting into my favorite accessories. Number 11, we're talking about rock lights. Now this is the most expensive thing on the list and I think it's still under 130 bucks. Um, this is a set of eight rock lights with a controller that you can install on your car. I have three on each side you know, one under each wheel, and then I have them underneath my rock sliders, and then I have one under the hood and one in the back of the truck lighting up the whole rear of the truck where I have the deck system. Um, these are LEDs, so they're very low power. They don't draw on the battery that much. Um, they also are my favorite kind of scene lighting, which is kind of dim. They're bright enough that when you're airing up your tires, you know, after getting off a trail late at night, you have all the light that you need to be able to see things. But if you leave them on and you're walking around your camp and setting up your tent and everything, they're not so bright that they just ruin your night sight. So I really like these. You can set them to any color of the rainbow that you want. You can turn it into a dance party if you want. They have a Bluetooth controller. They're all pretty amazing for under 130 bucks. It is one of my favorite accessories that we use at camp when we get in late. Um, so definitely check these out. They're pretty awesome. Also very easy to install. It took me a couple hours in an afternoon to install all of them. Number 12 is the Trasheroo. Now, this is an accessory that everybody loves to make fun of. Now, there's a couple things I wanna talk about at the Trasheroo really quick. Number one, you'll see a lot of complaints about it where people will say that they fade. Yes, they are made out of fabric, so they do fade in the sun. The main one that fades is the black one, and if you get the black one, it fades to purple. So I just really wouldn't recommend getting the black one. Get one of the other colors, the green one, the tan one. They all fade to cool colors. The black one, for some reason, fades to purple. But if you don't mind the fade, and then you you don't mind the fact that yes you will be replacing this it's not going to last forever I, I hear a lot of people that say oh there's so many better options than the trasheroo out there and there is and you can shop around the thing is they cost three to four times as much as a trasheroo so by the time that I say okay I can buy that one of them or I can buy four trasheroos I'll get longer use out of four trash roos than I will most of the competition. So I don't think it's really a good apples to apples comparison. A trash roo is around 50 bucks. They work great. You can use them for hauling your firewood. You can use them for hauling your trash. You can use them for packing and packing out your own human waste, which you do not want to have inside of your truck, or I don't even want to have it in the back of my bed. I want it in something that I can hose out just in case something bad happens, right? That's a trash roo. Uh, but this is one of my favorite accessories. The other thing is you will always have a trash can wish with you wherever you go if you have a trash roo which when we go rafting and there's trash laying all over where everybody takes out their rafts it's much easier to just naturally want to go clean up an area when you happen to actually have a trash can with you at all times so we find ourselves being much better stewards of nature obviously we take our own trash out we always do but we find ourselves cleaning up other people's trash here and there just because it's easy and because it's already there Okay, well that's it. Um, it looks like I went over a little bit, so leave a comment below and I will be contacting one of you to ship one of these out to you, one of these items out. We'll see you on a video in the near future. Um, thanks for tuning in.